today I'm walking from Carnarvon back to Bangor. I've done 131 miles so far. Now I'm heading back towards Atherton. I got to thinking yesterday in the hotel about energy and how it is built into the very fabric of the universe. Without energy there is no universe. Without energy there is no life. Everything uses energy, including you and me, every living thing. But that energy has to be fueled. There has to be fuel in order to create the energy for work. Just like our own man-made machines. They need energy to work our computers, our motor cars. But that energy needs fuel. Everything has to be fueled. But the machines have to be able to process the fuel to convert it into energy like our human bodies we eat food and our bodies convert that into energy so that we can work so that we can live when we look at evolution Darwinian evolution more specifically we see why Darwin proposed his theory it was in opposition to Paley's watchmaker analogy see William Paley suggested that Our man-made machines are not much different to natural machines, only that our, the natural machines are far more complex because they are alive. They are living machines. So Darwin proposed his theory to try and counteract the idea that living machines, just like man-made machines, require a designer, require an intelligence, a mind. It's a very powerful argument. So along comes Darwin to suggest that these things can come about by themselves, by natural processes. You see the beauty of Darwinian evolution is that it enables a very simple idea. And it's that simplicity that is shrouding people's sight is blinding people, is deluding people. Because it is suggesting that the whole complexity of life can be narrowed down to this simple process. That's what's so clever about it. The problem is that it's so simplistic an idea that I suppose that's what's the beauty of it. That's what is the appeal to some people. Especially for those people who don't want to believe in God. 
but it is so simplistic an idea that it completely ignores how complex life really is and how complex the process of natural selection really is and what's involved in that process So getting back to my point about energy, in order for, for any sort of complex life to exist, to evolve, despite every other mechanism that is required, the mechanism of reproduction, the mechanism of development, the building a structure, there's also the mechanism for, for building the machinery that converts fuel into energy. But the point of evolution is that fuel has to be created first. There has to be an abundance of fuel for living organisms to evolve. That has to be in place first of all before any complex life can exist. What I mean is that the components have to be in place in order for life to develop and ever more increasing complex life to develop. What I mean is, when we think about ourselves, we humans, we of course, we eat other animals, and we eat plants but of course those plants and animals eat other things they require fuel and so on and so on everything requires fuel and those things have to be in place there has to be a definite hierarchy there has to be an order a process if you believe in evolution certain things have to come first before other things could develop. They are restricting themselves by that very process, by the, the naturalistic process. That somehow brought us into being, brought all this, all of these things, the whole world, the whole universe into being. For the creationist, they believe in God. They believe that God can do things differently than the natural order. God can create things in a different order. God can suspend nature if he so wishes. That's why I believe that creationist is not restricted. restricted by time or oh, it has to be millions or billions of years because the creationist believes in God I mean the evolutionist ridicules the creationist for the statement in the Bible about a talking snake But how much more ridiculous is that compared to a, the idea that some sort of worm evolved over millions of years to start talking? I mean, 
mean when we're talking about creation and the evidence for creation. Obviously we're not talking about proof here, but the evidence is common sense. You can see that all of this shows the hallmarks of design. It seems to me that evolution by natural selection is just an excuse. It's just given people an excuse to deny the creator, to deny God. Because the only people you're convincing with it are those who don't want to believe in God. You have to look at what atheism entails. The denial, not just of a creator, but the denial of justice. denial of an objective moral standard. The denial of the spiritual. Because basically you're bound by only by what your five senses tell you. Because that's what science is based on. What we observe. It seems arrogant to think that we can understand everything about the universe, about this world, about the whole creation. That we humans, with our five senses, can understand it all. What on earth makes us think? that we can know everything just based on our five senses that there's nothing lies beyond them that science is the only route towards knowledge and there's nothing lies beyond that over six miles and I've been walking for nearly two and a half hours. I'm now three and a half miles from Bangor. I'm now approaching Bangor. I've done 13 miles today, so that means I've done 144 miles since last Monday. I've done over 30,000 steps today. As you can 
see the great arm in the distance. That's where I'll be heading tomorrow. distance you can see the great arm and the Clandon Low. Today I'm heading towards Clandon Low. Getting back to the debate that I was speaking about the other day, something that uh, came to my mind yesterday, talking about the evidence for evolution, our close relationship with the apes, the close relationship genetically. If we're created by the same God, then of course we'll be closely related genetically. But there was something else that came to my mind as I was watching a program last night called War Factories. And it's, it's a program about the Second World War and the the technology and the, the mass production of weapons and munitions that were created during the Second World War. The advancement in technology and mass production was astounding. What about all the, the great achievements that humans have made compared to other animals? Our ability to create art literature, music, far surpasses anything that the animal kingdom can, can do, can achieve. And the atheist scientist says, well, I suspect that most people in the, in the audience cannot produce these works, these great works. And that's true. That doesn't mean, of course, they can't read and write, or that they can't create something artistic. But it takes me back to the film, the movie, I, Robot, when Will Smith says to Sonny, the robot, uh, can, can a, a robot create a great work of art? A masterpiece. And Sonny, the robot, turns to him and says, can you? Nothing in the whole animal kingdom comes anywhere near to that, to producing that technology. Yes, the evolutionists will say, even apes can use tools, even Darwin's finches. A twig. But that surely is nothing compared to what man can and has achieved technologically. The old advancements in science surely is testimony to human capacity, the human capacity to solve problems 
in the world. And it's this science that the atheists and the evolutionists prides itself over. It is our scientific achievements that the atheists and the evolutionists want to champion. It's our scientific achievements that set us so much higher than the, the animal kingdom. And surely, whether it's 1% or 2% difference between us and, and the apes, surely that 1 or 2% does not explain the vast difference between us and the apes. I mean, many, if not, if not most, of these atheistic evolutionists are scientists. You know, they're, they're far cleverer than somebody like me. They're far more advanced than somebody like me. And yet, they want to bring us down to the level of the animals. They want to bring our achievements and even their own personal individual achievements. Because that's what they're doing. They're bringing those things down to their level. Down to the level of, of the animals.
miles from Bangor. Now heading towards Conway. Two. and I've done just over 12 miles from Bangor see the great arm in front of me and landed now but I've got to walk to Conway first and that's where I'm heading to now See the Grand Hotel in the distance, the side of the Great Arm. Still got quite a distance to walk though yet before I get to the I've done just 
over 28,000 steps. By yesterday I'd done over 145 miles from Atherton. We'll see how many I, I do today. Tomorrow I'm hoping to walk to Rail. I'm now leaving Anglesey behind me. Walking for over five hours. I've done just over 14 miles. I'm now heading very close to the coast here, and it's uh, quite worry to say the least. I've always become very wary of the foreign rocks. Potential of falling rocks. I'm getting close to the beach here, close to the coast, and I'm also getting close to these overhanging rocks. scary walking past those rocks. I can see the great arm in front of me, the Grand Hotel and the Conway and that's where I'm heading towards now, to Conway Castle.
I have just reached Conway Castle. I just walked 18 miles from Bangor. You now heading towards the Gamway and then to Clandoddon. It's nearly 4 o'clock, just leaving Conway, heading towards the Gamway, and I've just done 40,000 steps today. reached the Gamway and now I'm heading towards Clandudno. to go now before I reach Clandudno. I've done over 20 miles so far today. All the way from Bangor. Tomorrow I'm hoping to walk to Rail. Heading into Clandudno. Over 20 miles today. Gotta be 165 miles since last Monday. From Atherton to Carnarvon. Now I'm on my way back. But that's it, I've reached the hotel at Clandudno. It's actually come to 24 miles, so that means now I've done 169 miles since last Monday. And don't know to the end. Quite a lovely day today for a walk.
lot of work going on along the promenade here at Penryn Bay and also at Ross on Sea. I'm now on my way to Ross on Sea to the town centre and then on to Colwyn Bay. In the distance, you can see the, the hills, and that's where I'm heading towards. midday now it's a lovely day although it's quite windy really enjoying today this best day so far it's been quite a, a good walk all, all around so far had a few problems on the first day I obviously hadn't uh, worn in my new shoes enough Walking from Atherton to Chester in one go did take a lot out of me. Thank God, I'm still going. I'm hoping to reach Rio today. As you can see in the distance, electric turbines in the sea. I said at Henry Bay they're doing a lot of work on the promenade and the same here at Ross on Sea. First wind turbines to be built here on the off the coast of Colwyn Bay were built in 2003. there. We've done over seven miles so far and it's nearly one o'clock and it started to rain. This one I said it was a good day. There's one good thing about this rain however is that for the third time this week or for the third time during this walk I've seen the most beautiful rainbow. Thank God for that. As you can see, there's plenty of work going on here at Old Colwyn. Again, along the promenade, the coastal defences. Half past one, and I've done 
nine miles so far today. I'm heading towards Abergelly and Pensarn and then on to Rill. That'll, that'll be it for today. Tomorrow I'm hoping to walk to Halkin via Flint. It's hard to believe I've walked all the way along this coast here so far. Still got quite a bit to do though yet. nearly three and a half hours now and it's gone nice again the rain has stopped you can see real rest that in far in the distance just enjoying a nice walk on the coast here today About to make out the Ferris wheel at Towing. And it's just gone two o'clock. Just starting to get a little bit philosophical again. Let's think about the rain and how amazing the water cycle is. The water is recycled from the sea, goes up into the clouds and then falls onto the land as, as fresh water. Absolutely amazing. And to think that all that had to be in place before we could exist, could live comfortably. All the things that had to be in place in order for us to to exist. The plants. And the animals that eat the plants. And the air that we breathe. This has just happened. It just happens to be right for us. And just think about the amazing properties of water. How it can be stored as ice. How it replenishes the earth. such a system that allows fresh water to be deposited over the entire globe the whole system water that we drink is so essential for life we take it for granted like I said about the fuel and how everything everything that moves every single thing has to has to be fueled to create energy including us humans when we eat food all of these things have to be in place if you believe in evolution all these things have to be put there first 
just the right amount of water. Too much and it would engulf all of the, all of the land. Too little and life would not survive. As we know it. I mean, surely we would not exist. the whole point of it. Because that's the question. Why do we exist? You and me. Why do I exist? Turbines seem to stretch for miles. I don't know how many there are of them. It must be quite an undertaking to build them in the sea as well. I suppose that's the way forward. I believe that the first one was built 20 years ago. treated to another beautiful rainbow A symbol of God's promise it's all very reassuring thanks be to God Miles done. I'm approaching Abagale. I've been walking for over four and a half hours from Clandudno. And after Abagale, it's towing and grill. So that means I've done over 182 miles so far. reached Abagali and Pensan railway station. About five miles from the After this, it's real. The end of my walk for today. Well, it's four o'clock. I've done 16 miles today from Clandon North. 
over over 35,000 steps. So that means I've done 185 miles since last Monday. It's hard to imagine how far these wind turbines stretch in the distance all along the, the Welsh coast. And that's quite a quite an achievement to build them offshore like that. So many of them. That's 187 miles since last Monday. And I've just done 40,000 steps. So that's 19 miles now. So that's 188 miles from Atherton to Carnarvon and back to Reveal so far. Walking from Rill to Talkin by Flint. I've done 188 miles so far. There's just three more days to go. Stephen.
walking past the chalets here at Pontins, the best satin. Just gone half past 12. I'm now walking alongside the D estuary and the Wirral Peninsula. Heading towards Flint. The D estuary and the Wirral Peninsula. In the distance. Half miles from Mostyn. It's now one o'clock and I've done over ten miles. This lovely cycle path to Mostyn. I've nearly done 11 miles today. When I reach 12 miles, that means I'll have reached 200 miles altogether so far. And I've still got to walk to Flint and Alkin today. Chester tomorrow. And back to Atherton on Saturday. I've now done 12 miles today from Rill, so that means now I have reached 200 miles and I'm still going. Just over these rocks to my left, I can see the world peninsula. And I'm heading further inland towards Flint. I'm not I'm not sure, but I think I can see the Queen's Ferry crossing up ahead in the distance.
I can see Queen's Ferry Crossing and the power station at Connors Quay in the distance. So I'm not far from Flint now. Crossing, Connors Key, Power Station. I'll be heading that way tomorrow to Chester. We've done over 23 miles today. That's 211 miles altogether so far. This is 23 miles from Rill to Halkin by a flint. There's flint in the distance of this walk from. And there's Connors Key and Queen's Ferry where I'll be heading tomorrow. Today I'm walking from Helkin to Chester. So far on this walk I've done over 469,000 steps. I've also done over 211 miles. Connors Key heading towards Shotton and then Chester. I've done over six miles so far today. That's 217 miles altogether. towards Howarden Bridge, the railway bridge. I'm going to cross here over the River Dee and then head back towards Chester along the River Dee. I'm now walking over Howarden Bridge, walking over the River Dee to the other side. Now reach the England and Wales border. Just crossing this park now. And I'll be back into England and walking into Chester. That's it now, I've just crossed the border and I'm back into England. I'm just not now walking into Chester.
walking along the Roman wall here at Chester. I've walked 15 miles today from Helkin near Flint. So that means I've now done 226 miles so far. Last day tomorrow, walking back home to Addison. Here I am walking along the Roman wall at Chester. I've done 17 miles today from Helkin near Flint to Chester. So that means I've done 228 miles in total so far. Over to walk back home to Haverton tomorrow. This is the final day of my walk. I'm walking from Chester to Atherton today. I've done 229 miles so far. Well, I've been walking for two and a half hours. I've done nearly nine miles and I've now reached Hellsby. Heading towards Frodsham next. Walking for over three hours. I've done just over 11 miles and I've now reached Dodger. I'm now heading towards Dersborough. Newton Lovell Owls now. I've done 26 miles so far. So that means I'm now within 10 miles of home. I'm approaching Newton Lovell Owls railway station. I've walked 26 miles today so far from Chester. I've got 10 more miles to do to reach home. I've now reached Lowton, 29 miles, and I've got 7 more miles to do. Well, that's a familiar sight. I can now see in front of me, Rivington Pike. I'm not far from home now. Just to Lee and then Charlton. I'm now approaching Lee. I've done nearly 32 miles. It's just gone six o'clock. I've just got to walk now to Atherton. Well, here I am back at Atherton. Well, I'm back at Atherton, just passing St. John's the Baptist Church. The old place doesn't change much, does it? And as soon as I reach Atherton, it starts raining. Typical. It's actually been quite a nice day today. A little bit of rain in Dursbury, and then just a little bit more in Atherton. <laughs> 